First and foremost, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you gathered here this evening. Whether you're a longtime parishioner, a newcomer, an alumni from our school returning to the neighborhood, a guest, or to those who are just walking past and saw people gathered around a fire and wanted to see what we were doing, a warm welcome to you all. Tonight's liturgy is Catholicism on steroids. Tonight we see firsthand the beauty and amazement that God offers us through his church. The signs and symbols alone show us who God is more in this liturgy than any other throughout the year. We started in a dark church that became bright with the light of Christ. We sat in darkness except for this Easter candle as we heard salvation history from creation to the story of Abraham and Moses, the prophets, and then the great moment of the resurrection when we sang the Gloria and all the lights came on. And soon we'll be reminded of our own baptism and celebrate the sacrament of confirmation before we all share in the banquet of Christ and receive the Eucharist. This night has it all. But my friends, tonight isn't special because of the drama or our beautiful music or the various signs and symbols. What makes tonight special is the permeating reminder that Christ is the light of the world and that God desires us more than anything else. In the creation story, we learned that everything God made is good and that humanity is very good because we're created in God's own image and likeness. When we heard the story of Abraham and Isaac, we learned that while God may test us, he will never make us do something unloving. Abraham passed the test, and God never intended to have Abraham kill his son. Then in the Exodus story, we're reminded that God is faithful and always keeps his promises. God promised Abraham land flowing with milk and honey, more ancestors than the stars in the heavens, and a great nation. And God delivered on that promise when he freed the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt through Moses and led them to the Holy Land. The prophet Isaiah foreshadowed the coming of God's Son when he said beautifully, For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word, remember, is God's beloved son. Finally, before the lights came on and we sang that Gloria, we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you, 
and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers, hearkening back to Exodus. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. St. Paul then reminds us of our baptism and the great importance of this sacrament. It's in baptism that we die the death that matters. Baptism is the death of our old self that was born into sin. And then we rise from the font as Jesus rose from the tomb, a new creation. In baptism, we put on Christ. We become Jesus Christ. We inherit all the promises that we heard in the readings tonight. We are part of that great nation that is the body of Christ. We have an eternal homeland filled with more than milk and honey. It's flowing with the blood and water of Christ and the martyrs. My sisters and brothers, baptism is our great participation in the Paschal mystery that we have been celebrating these last three days. And the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life that we have all been baptized into. Friends, do you see why tonight is so important and special. Do you get it? Tonight is about more than playing with fire. It's about setting our hearts on fire to continue the mission of Jesus. It's about us remembering whose we are so that we know who we are. And that's what leads us to preach the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, to remember that our God is faithful and keeps his promises, that God loves us so much that he sent his only son to save us from sin and death, that Jesus is the word that became flesh, dwelt among us, and died on the cross so that our stony hearts can be made soft and that we would recognize that God is love. My sisters and brothers in Christ, tonight is about new life and recommitting ourselves to being better disciples of Jesus. Jesus doesn't expect us to be perfect, but he does expect us to try and to multiply. Don't let tonight end in this church. Go and make disciples. Go and spread the love of God. Go and continue preaching the good, good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead.